for millennia. The Imperium and her people have undergone many strifes in service for their god emperor. From the green tide of the beast, the arrival of High Fleet Behemoth, to the awakened horrors of the Necrons, the Imperium fought on to keep the torch of humanity ablaze, its beacon a shining light against the hungering darkness of the galaxy. Yet, it was upon the destruction of Cadia that the Imperium might have undergone its darkest age. Since the end of the Horus Heresy, Cadia had stood defiant against the dark tides of Chaos, a planet that gatekept the Imperium from the eye of Terra's hordes of traitorous space marines, cultists, and demonic angels of the Dark Gods. So long as this castle of a world stood, the Imperium was safe from the full, unmerciful wrath of the Chaos Gods. However, this sense of safety from the eye's spiteful gaze would come crumbling down upon the Imperium during Abaddon's thirteenth Black Crusade. Though Cadia had warded off Abaddon's infamous crusades time and time again, it was the Warmaster's thirteenth crusade that would finally break the planet. Though the lives lost in the crusade were horrifically high, it seemed that the war world would once again fend off another one of Abaddon's military campaigns. The combined forces of Imperial and Xenos military were pushing back the Black Legionaries, and it appeared that Cadia would once again stand defiant against the Champion of Chaos. The soldiers who stood their guard in the trenches, however, would see that victory would not be theirs to claim, as a mighty shadow blanketed them. Unpronounced to Cadia's children, Abaddon had an ancient Xenos vessel, known as a Blackstone Fortress, to come crashing down upon the planet. It was an enormous ship, and it struck the planet like a bell, cracking and fracturing it whole. The molten core of the planet bled to the surface and drowned its very children in oceans of lava. With the crescendo of screaming, dying men, the entire planet erupted in fire and brimstone. Despite all efforts to hold the boulevard between the Eye and the Imperium, Cadia was dead. The planet was no more. Nor was the gate that blockaded the raw stuff of the warp. Like a reptilian tongue, it launched its energies across the Milky Way itself. It tore through half of the galaxy, a knife cutting open the literal belly of the Imperium. Out of this galactic wound are what the Imperium would later name the Cicatrix Maledictum, literal armies of demon things poured from this tear in reality and down upon countless worlds. Planets from both halves of the Imperium were sieged against what seemed to be the harbingers of the Apocalypse. All were put to the sword at the hands of giants armoured in warp-plated ceramite, or made as sacrifices to their dark, malicious gods. In a way, it seemed that Harkon himself had plunged his spear upon the galaxy, and the Apocalypse had finally come upon all creation. Yet, from these black fires of Armageddon, survivors sensed a form rising from the flames. A flaming beast, not of the Apocalypse, but a born-again wonder from an ancient time. A blue-feathered phoenix that would smother the fires of the warp with its own flame of avenging wrath. At first, many believed this to be a hoax. Such an idea was preposterous for many, for such a story would be one told through churchly hymns or bellowed by unhinged zealots. Yet the rumour became truth as the Imperium's children witnessed the godlike man take stage upon the galactic theatre. Raboot Gulliman, Primarch of the Ultramarines and the thirteenth son of the God Emperor of Mankind, had awakened from his throne at long last. After ten millennia of stasis sleep, Gulliman was brought back to the world of the living with the aid of Xenos technology to lead his father's people. Only the foolish dared to challenge the flesh and blood of their god as he announced his return. Through bloodied and carded flesh of the heretical, Gulliman and his entourage of crusaders would race to Terra, the very cradle of humanity, to where the Primarch would hope to meet his throne-bound father once more. The gates to his father's hall would open before him, held closed since the god's entombment upon his mighty throne. Gulliman would enter this hall, to where, after millennia of separation, he would once again reunite with his father. 
of what was spoken between the two divines would not be recorded, nor shared by the Primarch as the gates closed behind him as he left his father's hall. Of what would have been exchanged between the god and the hero of legend would be a mystery for all time, and fiercely debated amongst the scholars and chroniclers. Yet, of what would be recorded afterwards would become not a new chapter in the Imperium's history, but a brand new saga. Gulliman announced his crowning as the Imperium's Lord Commander and Imperial Regent, the very voice of his father. Not only would he take personal charge of the Imperium's governance during those dark times, but also announced a crusade to take back the Imperium. From those who would answer his call, fleets of the Imperial Navy, of Militarum regiments, Astartes chapters, and many more of the Imperium's war machine would come racing to terror to be part of Gulliman's Great Crusade. Not only would this be a gathering of military force not seen since the days of the Great Crusade, but also the reveal of new angels of war. Angels of a new breed who were kept hidden from the Imperium at large. Commissioned long ago by Gulliman before his stasis entombment, Archmagos Belisarius' call would reveal to his master his promised product. Kept in stasis and undergoing training that would break the sanity of all but regular space marines, the Astartes of the newly created Primaris Matrix were finally revealed. Taller and mightier than the average Astartes, these angels would serve as the vanguard of Gulliman's crusade. Seraphim who would bring both reinforcements to struggling chapters and rebirth to those lost in valiant duty. His forces gathered, Gulliman aimed his flaming sword towards the sky and launched his Indomitus crusade. The Imperium, of what was a dying torch, would become a mighty blue lantern against those who sought humanity's destruction. The Indomitus Crusade, the literal born-again phoenix of the Imperium, would be the bane against the galactic terrors. It would come as an avenging, flaming beacon against a galaxy of no respite or mercy. In this grim dark era, there is no pity, remorse, or fear. There is only war.